Hey everybody, good morning. This is uh, November 3rd, Friday. Um, I'm giving you the usual Friday update. I know I'm wearing the same sweater that I wore in uh, last Friday's video, but it's a different shirt. Uh, we're here inside the Frontier Tech Law offices in New Haven, Connecticut. Those of you who've been with me, you know, for a while, I think there's like a handful of you, a few dozen. We got some kind of cool updates. So first thing is uh, our North Carolina office, that physical office is being closed. Everything's moving to New Haven, but it doesn't matter. It's all virtual anyway. So for those of you who don't know, this channel, which is called Law Great, and currently says Frontera, you know, uh, Labor and Immigration, is run by Frontera Tech Law. But anyhow, we're closing that Durham office. I'd lived in North Carolina, moved to Connecticut, kept two offices, and now it's just this New Haven, Connecticut office. The other big change is that uh, I've actually changed the name of the channel from Law Great, which is kind of like fun, you know, whimsical, to Frontera Tech, uh, you know, Labor and Immigration. And the reason is that really the focus of this channel over time has moved more and more towards talking about labor recruitment, right, uh, within the immigration world, in addition to still talking about immigration. But it's a signal for me that we are going to move even further into that kind of labor law uh, direction. We also have some other things that we want to be putting um, out here. So we are planning a podcast, you know, we're building out the studio in New Haven. We had one in Durham before, North Carolina before COVID, but I'm also going to be focusing more and more on kind of H2B content. The stuff that I'm going to be putting about immigration generally is going to be of a generally much higher quality. Which brings me to announcement three. Be on the lookout today and might publish with this video of a top 10 video that I'm really proud of. Santiago Romano Spina, who's our editor, who lives in both Colombia and Spain, put hours and hours into kind of trying to create this vision I had for a top 10 video that talks about the ways that immigration under the Biden administration is the same as it was under the previous administration. And it's not because the Biden administration or the previous administration were trying to do things particularly badly, even though, you know, there are definite differences of approach, but because a lot of the failure of the system is baked in and has been baked in for a long time. And so in that top 10 video, which is called top 10 ways that immigration hasn't changed under Biden, I get into that and it's probably the most produced video I've ever done in my time as a YouTuber and definitely in my time as a, as a lawyer. So be on the lookout for that because that's the sort of content that I wanna lift up. I noticed of course the most popular videos we have have to do with like doing USCIS hacks and preparing applications. And as you know, we're really coming out of the hibernation of COVID COVID, you've noticed that my video production you know, ramped up this year. What the analytics are telling us is that you want, you really want videos that are of that sort of practical usage. You don't want me rambling in the camera. You want some stuff about H2Bs. You want some stuff about particular applications. So the model going forward is to give you lots of well-produced technical stuff right? Big picture videos like top 10 ways immigration is the same under Biden as it was in the previous administration. This is how you bind an application. And then what I'm going to provide too is just like quick series of videos on like very niche topics like how to do an anti-visa, right? How to file a H2B, maybe how to do a K-1 visa in the future, that sort of thing. So be on the lookout. That's announcement number three. In terms of like what I'm thinking about this week, I've had some super cool things happen. We just had a client yesterday who was approved for a spousal I-485 adjustment status without an interview. USCIS promised over the summer that we would see spousal petitions, just like parental petitions were being approved without interviews before. We would see that start happening in spousal petitions. We have seen it now. Cool things are happening with our U visas. We've been holding on U visas for five years in some cases. We are finally seeing U visas from 2018 start getting approved. So that's like a four and a half year wait. Hopefully that's gonna mean good things for other backlogs, right? U visas, T visas, but I'm not overly optimistic things will get much faster as you'll see in this top 10 video that's coming out today. The update from the H2B visa front is that we're still waiting on kind of final announcements for when the additional visas and how they're going to be released. I'm still betting it's gonna be very similar to last year for this cycle where we're gonna hear the release in December and workers will be coming sometime in January. That's certainly, certainly my bet. We know that the election is going to have some sort of impact on what can and can't be done. And uh, what's interesting about the H2B visa program is that it's something that's really championed by Republicans in the Senate and the House as opposed to Democrats. And, uh, you know, whereas the more humanitarian side of immigration, the one doesn't have to deal with the kind of 
technical complexities of a work program tends to be more championed by Democrats. And so the election, it, there's not really like, if you're thinking about it in terms of what's best for immigration overall, I don't know that there's a easy answer to that. As always, and I make sense of this in the top 10 video, what we need for a functioning system is for everybody to be on the same page of we're ready to discuss our immigration issues and come up with a legislative solution. But when it comes election time, uh, because we don't have that sort of cooperation, it's kind of like a, it's either a lose-lose or a win-win, depending on how you look at it. So for the H2B program, uh, Susan Collins being able to chair, you know, committees that have an impact on the program would be a win, which means that the Republicans will win the Senate, right? Probably not the case for the humanitarian side of immigration, right? In which case you might be cheering for a Democratic Senate. I don't cheer for anything. I kind of stay in the gray, gray line area here, but I'm just saying, you know, that's what the stakes of the election are. It's a win-win or a lose-lose, depending on what part of immigration you're looking at. But really what we know is that the majority of the problems in immigration are going to stay the same as long as we don't have the ability to talk about it in a bipartisan manner. What I'm looking forward to here in November is, you know, we have this huge ramp up uh, in my practice of H2B petitions where now we're finishing the statements of need so they can be ready to go on January 1st. Um, I am not taking any more clients um, really after today. Like we, we'd said November 10th in previous videos, but we're so booked to the gills as there are a lot of agents in the H2B program and lawyers who specialize on this. So if you do have questions, you know, I'll answer them, but it's very likely I can't take any more clients just to be responsible to the ones that I have and make sure that our firm can finish all that work. Um, it is going to be a hyper competitive season. Um, in terms of family, petitions and things like that, I anticipate 2023 to be a high filing date, right? So we're getting closer to the 2024 election. And what's going to happen is that people are going to start panicking that maybe there's going to be a Republican administration, because remember, Republicans uh, are perceived perhaps as being uh, really hard on family petitions, maybe fairly so given Stephen Miller's policies, which are disastrous. Uh, for the structure of the USCIS and DOS previous administration, but um, I, I'm already getting calls from people being like, I need to file now because, you know, there might be bad news down the road on whether I can do this. So I anticipate that it's going to be a very heavy filing season just based on what I've seen this year. Take that for what it is in terms of what you need to do. Um, I'm rambling a bit here, but um, I just wanted to give you this Friday update. That's what's on my mind. Not too much is happening news-wise, but a lot is happening with our firm and with what we're doing. So have a happy Friday, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. And make sure you watch that awesome video that's coming out later today.